Our story begins in 1855 under the dark skies of Allegheny County, Maryland. George Getty was born here, the harbinger of a family that was destined to gain great power and wealth. But it came at a price. Young George's childhood was marred by difficulties. Having moved to Ohio, the child at the age of six suffered the bereavement of his father. However, the financial help of Uncle Joseph helped George get out of these adversities and sent him to Ohio Northern University. And in 1879, the hardworking guy graduated from there with a Bachelor of Science degree and an insatiable thirst for new achievements. Attracted to the law, George continued to refine his intellect at the University of Michigan Law School. He eventually settled in Minneapolis, where he specialized in insurance and corporate law. But 1882 whispered something darker in his ear, and he couldn't resist the call. Although George did not officially enter the oil industry until 1904, that year marked a rebellious turn. Passionate about natural resources, he made a choice that was dangerous. He abandoned a thriving legal career and pulled his family into the unpredictable maelstrom of the Oklahoma oil trade. Soon, one of the elements that accelerated George's rapid success was his amazing ability to recognize potentially oil-rich landscapes, coupled with the ability to negotiate lucrative drilling rights, combining technical savvy with business acumen. It is at this point in history that we would like to imagine George Getty living a life somewhat similar to that of Daniel Day-Lewis's hero. The first half of the classic film features Blood, a shrewd and ruthless oilman whose ability to seize opportunities is both admirable and foreboding as it will ultimately lead to the death of his family. Indeed, under the flag of the Minnehoma Oil Company, George's adventure began to pay off indecent sums. The culmination was the family's move in 1906 to Los Angeles, which was influenced by several factors. At the time, Los Angeles was not only a growing center of the oil industry, but also a booming city that offered Getty opportunities to expand and diversify his business. Moreover, the favorable business climate and newfound reputation as an oil town made it an ideal location for the next chapter of their lives, which mixed promise and danger. His son, John Paul Getty, J. Paul, born in 1892, was soon born in Minneapolis. He arrived on a scene set by his father's ambitions. Indeed, from an early age, J. Paul Getty was a living echo of his father George's obsession with business. Already as a child, J. Paul showed extraordinary concentration and insatiable curiosity. These qualities simultaneously intrigued and frightened those around him. When the boy grew up and became an adult, his family sent him to the University of California at Berkeley and then to Oxford. These schools were chosen for their outstanding reputation and the comprehensive education they provided. They were seen as ideal preparation for J. Paul's inevitable entry into the family oil business. In 1971, the legendary Giddy Museum opened as a testament to the family's enormous influence. Located in Los Angeles in two bastions, the Giddy Villa and the Giddy Center, the museum is a sanctuary of visual wonders from ancient relics to contemporary snapshots. The museum attracts approximately two million pilgrims every year, and its sacred halls and tranquil landscapes go beyond mere tourist interest. However, the very existence of the museum casts a double shadow as a monument to disguise luck and as a beacon for art lovers. In 1976, Jay, Paul Getty finally left the world stage, leaving behind a staggering fortune estimated at $4 billion or $27 billion 2023 dollars. However, his departure did not create a smooth succession, but a labyrinth of financial and emotional complications. While the bulk of his empire went to the Getty Trust, which cares for the Getty Museum and other cultural monuments, separate amounts were allocated for his children. These distributions became the basis for family discord, turning enormous wealth into a breeding ground for scandals and divisions, and the Giddy legacy was in jeopardy. In 1984, as a result of high-profile events that shook up society, the aforementioned Gordon Giddy, a fan of art and the Giddy Oil Company, was exposed as leading a double life. Two families, one his famous wife Anna and their adult sons, the other a secret enclave consisting of three daughters and their mother Cynthia Beck coexisted in a shadowy liminal space until legal battles over name changes and future inheritance brought them into the public arena. The explosive revelations rocked the already complex personal dynamics of the Getty family, but the turmoil did not end there. In 1986, the landmark Getty Oil-Texaco merger took place. Its price tag of $10, one cent billion dollars, or $54 billion in today's dollars, was monumental even by Getty's lofty standards. This was not just a deal, it was a tectonic shift. The family's financial future was secured, but at the cost of severing generations' ties to the oil industry, a cornerstone of their collective identity, and as if to cap an era full of strife and drama. 
1999 saw the death of J. Paul Getty IA at the age of 54. His life has indeed been a series of tragic twists and turns, starting with a nightmarish kidnapping in 1973, an event that left him with an immeasurable and indelible scar. The following decades passed in a whirlpool of drug addiction and mental anguish. Unfortunately, by then this was a common occurrence in the family, a burden that would only be lifted thanks to the next generation's will to power in Hollywood, which would also bring its own problems. Over the next few years, J. Paul Getty became the undisputed captain steering the family's financial ship. The decade of the 1930s was a turbulent period, not only for Getty, but for the world at large. The Great Depression struck, destroying trading empires and casting a shadow of uncertainty on all industries. Against the backdrop of this economic maelstrom, J. Paul Getty and his mother Sarah took an important step in 1934 by creating a trust in which they both acted as trustees. Ostensibly intended to preserve the integrity of core corporate assets, the trust began a long battle for control of them. However, over the years, J. Paul has taken gradual but effective steps to consolidate his power. And these financial gambits were far from simple. They involved raising significant debt and complex negotiations that lasted for years. He then gradually acquired shares, thereby accumulating the voting power necessary to influence the trajectory of the family business. In essence, it was a slow-burning coup carried out methodically. His mother, Sarah Getty, who had originally been the guardian of the family legacy, found her control gradually weakening. Realizing her son's insatiable ambitions and his increasingly strategic control over the family's assets, she was eventually forced to relinquish her role. Thus, J. Paul retained control, reducing Sarah to a position in which she received an annuity but was deprived of power over the empire. Under J. Paul's watch, however, the family's fortunes soon reached a dizzying abyss in 1949, a moment marked by both audacity and foreboding. In a gamble that would baffle even seasoned oilmen, J. Paul invested $9, 5 cents million, about $116 million in today's currency in the barren landscape of the Saudi-Kuwaiti border, a place where oil time was considered the subject of myths. With a 60-year concession in his pocket, J. Paul played a waiting game that took four grueling years and required an additional $30 million or $369 million in 2023. But then, in 1953, the sands of Wafra revealed their dark treasure. It wasn't just oil, it was confirmation of J. Paul's almost reckless foresight. This discovery not only replenished the family treasury, it turned J. Paul into a titan among people, one of the richest in America and throughout the world. However, as his geologists turned the barren land into sources of wealth, one could feel that every triumph was also a door leading to new and unimaginable risks. To further unimaginable risks for the family and the next generation, Six years later, on July 27, 1959, Eileen Getty was born in fog-shrouded San Francisco. As the granddaughter of J. Paul Getty and the daughter of Gordon Getty, heir to a huge family fortune and significant philanthropist, it would seem that her life should be nothing more than a lesson in leisure. However, Gordon did have a difficult relationship with his own father, J. Paul Getty, which undoubtedly affected his children, such as Eileen. Although Gordon was exposed to the fine arts and culture, Thanks in part to his family's affluence, his relationship with J. Paul was often tense. A tangle of family debt, expectations, and the heavy mantle of a complicated inheritance. Against this background, Eileen's life took shape as a narrative. Far from the cliched scenarios that are usually associated with the role of an heiress, she forged her own path, full of difficulties and trials, proving that enormous wealth could not protect her from the vicissitudes of life, during her early years, Dudley Moore played the piano at her engagement party and she eventually married Christopher Wilding, son of the famous Elizabeth Taylor, but behind the glitter there were darker shades. Suffering from drug addiction, Eileen struggled with addiction to alcohol and drugs, and this battle was not only a personal crisis, but also cast a long shadow on the reputation of the Getty family. These problems were compounded by serious mental health problems, bouts of depression and anxiety, which exacerbated the effects of her addiction and negatively affected her well-being. But the most difficult test of her life came when, as a result of an extramarital affair, she became infected with HIV. This sensational discovery was more than just a personal medical crisis. It caused a media storm and added another layer of scandal to an already complicated family story. At the same time, J. Paul Getty, the family patriarch, was weaving his own tumultuous history. His personal life, consisting of five marriages, was a labyrinth of emotional and financial problems. In 1960, the world welcomed Mark Getty, another member of the famous Getty dynasty. 
Mark was born in Rome but raised in England. His academic studies in philosophy and politics at St. Catherine's College, Oxford, but he was no ordinary businessman. Mark has revolutionized the field of visual media. Getty Images soon dominated the market, becoming a stock photography colossus that dominated the visual narrative that shaped public perception. Then in 1992, Los Angeles welcomed Nat Getty, a dazzling amalgam of model, designer, socialite, and LGBTQ rights advocate, into its fold, and Nat took the stage in a style far removed from the low-key legacy of old money families like the Gettys. Nat's marriage to Canadian socialite and YouTube sensation, Gigi Gorgeous, was a spectacle that seemed almost surreal. This was more than just a wedding. It was an event that defied social norms. It challenged notions of old families and internet celebrities as if destroying the last vestiges of a once conservative dynasty. And then as if reminding the world that the Gettys were never far from tragedy, loomed ominously dark ghost. This was most sadly evident in the untimely death of Andrew Work Getty, grandson of J. Paul Getty Jr. Andrew's life was cut short on February 1, 2015 in Hollywood, another family victim of an accidental drug overdose. His absence was a chilling reminder that Getty's wealth and prestige are no protection from tragedy. In 2017, legendary director Ridley, Scott brought the Getty mystery to the silver screen in all the money in the world. However, this film quickly caused controversy. The film was originally supposed to star Kevin Spacey as Jay. Paul Getty CR, but due to high-profile allegations against the actor, the studio was forced to not only remove Spacey from the cast, but also reshoot all of his scenes, but also reshoot all of the already filmed scenes. In 2018, the television series Trust, directed by Danny Boyle, was released. The drama starring Donald Sutherland, Harris Dickinson, and Hilary Swank unfolded during the early years of the Getty saga. It was as if the screen itself had become a magnifying lens, focusing attention on the difficult relationships that determine the fate of the family. As the calendar turns to 2023, the family finds itself at a crossroads between a future filled with opportunity and an arena fraught with consequences, and an arena fraught with problems, and how they will cope with the resolution of recent scandals and growing media attention, which we will cover. With this, we will say goodbye to you. Thank you for watching. Do not forget to subscribe to our channel and like. In this way, you will be encouraged to make more videos for you. Thank you, everyone. See you again.